everybody. How's everyone doing this fine day? I pray that all is well with you, your homes, your families. And um, got something really, really interesting to talk with you all about today. And uh, you may or may not find it challenging, but I think that you may. I found it very challenging, and uh, but also very, very important and very worth it. So um, I'm going to kind of dig in and we're going to get going here. So 2020 is behind us, 2021 has begun, um, a lot of interesting things in, happening in our world, in our news, our country, especially um, the President Trump presidency has ended and President Biden has now been sworn in. Um, all the expected drama and things that go with that have kind of come and gone for the most part. Uh, so now we have a new president in place. And this, that's kind of, the, that's the beginning of war that I'm wanting to talk about today, because what I'm going to share with you is something that took place on Inauguration Day. So it was the 20th, which was Wednesday or was it Tuesday? But it was on the 20th. So there's this guy on YouTube. It's a guy that my wife turned me on to, and a guy named Philip Blair, who has a YouTube channel and ministry called Torch of Christ Ministries. And what basically they do Ba he is basically a street preacher, and his team of people kind of go with him. And they go, really, they've been all over the world. If you watch his YouTube stuff, they've been in some really rough places. And that's kind of the thing that they do. They go to the dangerous spots to stand on the corner, um, to street preach and evangelize and talk to whoever will talk with them, but to proclaim to the world uh, the, what the, the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And through doing so... Many, many things have happened, particularly what we're going to talk about today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on him, um, I don't know his particular theological slantings or whatever, but just off his YouTube page, um, I'm looking down at my notes. Uh, he's got 308 subscribers, 308,000, sorry, 308,000 subscribers. And also he's, uh, when he, he, he has a little intro, introduction video to himself. He's been able to, to street preach and do videos in 40 different cities in 20 different countries. Uh, so that's pretty awesome um, to be able to get out there and preach the gospel and the good news in all these different places. So what I'm going to do in this one is he, he the events that, that took place, because him and his team, they go out and they, they, they preach on these corners and they video everything. And so he put a video together explaining kind of the events of the day. And I'll put a link to that in the description of this video so you can go to it and watch the whole thing. Um, you know, because you, you get the events of what happened. You get their insight on how things went and what they were feeling and experiencing. Uh, so it's pretty good insight, too, as you see and you put the whole thing together. So I've just got some clips and things that I'm going to show and share with you guys to kind of lay, to walk through kind of what took place and to kind of just, you know, kind of uh, present that as, as best we can here in this one. Now, full disclosure um i in my past have never been particularly enthused with street preachers because they're usually the mr megaphone guy standing on a on a, a, a crate of some kind and broadcasting to the audience like you sinner turn or burn and it's all that kind of thing and there's there's you know no engagement with the crowd other than that people want to throw things at him or basically just hate on him. And, you know, it's it's very condemning. It's it's not a it's I've never seen it as a very good way to broadcast the true message of love of the gospel. But I do believe there's a place for it. Um but I will give uh Philip, you know, some some credit too when I watch his videos because at first I'm like, okay, street preacher, same kind of thing in my head. But I see that, you know, he, he really is just kind of really just broadcasting. He's not attacking anybody. He's not coming after anybody. But he is proclaiming who Jesus is, why Jesus came, and why we need him. And that's the gospel. That's what, as believers, that we're all called to do in some way, shape, or form. In whichever way that God has crafted and shaped your life to have a ministry to reach people, the people that you come in contact with, we're supposed to try and... Minister the love of Jesus. 
So he's doing his part in his way that God has provided for him. And I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of glad at this point in my life, this is where God's called him and not me. And that's just me being honest. So more power to you, Philip. I'm with you. I am with you, brother. And I thank you for what you do because you get, you're you bolder than I am at this point in my life. So more power to you, my friend. God bless you. Really, for real. So this YouTube channel, Torch of Christ, it's uh, you know something that my wife came across on YouTube. And we've watched some of his videos and things, but I wouldn't know who he was if you know, she hadn't first pointed him out to me. Any of you who know my wife, you know how dedicated to the Lord that she is and how dedicated in prayer that she is. And this particular day, uh, she was in prayer, reading her Bible and, and those type of things. And that's kind of a usual kind of daily event. But during her, her time spent with the Lord and in prayer, he put on her heart, you need to go on YouTube and see the Torch of, Ministry, Torch of Christ Ministries guy. So she did. She pulled him up on YouTube and seen that he was doing a live stream. And so that so that she knew immediately, based on now what she was seeing, that she was also brought there to help pray for him. So what you see, you'll see in in all these clips is how basically when you're watching it unfold live, um, you know, the drama is a little more real than watching it on this side where we know everything you know, turned out the way it did. But when you don't know what's going on and, and it's unfolding before your eyes live, uh, a little more intense. Um, so, you know, the Lord called her into it to be able to pray for him and lift him up. Okay, so first of all, so he, he and his team, they had to put on their heart that they needed to go and preach um, on Inauguration Day in Washington, D.C., and they wanted to be in, in front of the Capitol building and as close to all of the events as humanly possible for them. So as they, you know, they start, uh, you know, getting there, um, they, you know, they set up themselves. And one of the first places that they, they set themselves up to go preach is actually going to be, as you'll see, unbelievably close to the motorcade coming down the street with President Biden and Vice President Harris. Which is almost hard to believe because you have to already start to see this is a God thing because nobody gets this close to that as they were just standing there doing what they're doing. i got to add one little note is what you're going to see. And this is the framework that sets the whole video up. He has it on his heart to go and preach in sackcloth. Now, some for those of you who don't understand the idea of what sackcloth, doing things in sackcloth is, think like, you know, rusty burlaps, rusty, dirty, itchy burlap, burlap sack kind of things. And, you know, when you go out and you preach and, you, and, and do these things, it's, it's a, in the Bible, it's used to communicate mourning, loss, hurt, um, signs of repentance or entering into repentance. And that's the message he's he's trying to convey. Um, and you'll be able to hear his his preaching of this too. So I'm not going to try and, uh, you know, give his whole message for him. But basically he's identifying that America, which I know many of you will identify with this too, America seems to have lost its footing, lost its way. We are, have turned from a lot of biblical values that that turn to false idols and false ways. Uh, there's a list. We won't go there. And the verses following the one true God who gives us all his ways and instructions for life, ways that, uh, you know, give us and pour into us the fruit of the Spirit, the joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, love, contentment, all those things that God pours into the life of the believer that allows us to live and walk through life with love for each other and joy and love for the Father most of all. And, and that, you know, that's how that pours and spreads to each of us. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let us turn to the Lord and he will have mercy. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. 
Jesus Christ is King of Glory and He will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will lift you up and give you life. Your government will not save you, my friends. Jesus Christ brings an eternal kingdom. He brings a kingdom that's not of this world. There is only one name unto heaven given unto men whereby we can be saved. Jesus, the way, the truth. So one of the things that you see in the video clip is he's out in the middle of the street, right in the middle of the intersection where everything is blocked off and the motorcade comes going by. He had no idea, no plan. He had no idea that was going to happen. But then you also get a sense of all the police in the military and secret service and maybe people hidden in the shadows that that are there and he is in the middle in the midst of all this thing. So before I mentioned that he has 308,000 subscribers. So, you know, his message is going to a lot of people and being shared by those people. And one particular gal, um, I didn't write down or catch her name in this one, but uh, you'll see her in the video. But she came to meet Philip and his team, and she was taking the come to preach in step in sackcloth, if I could talk, sackcloth, and she's bringing it up a notch because the Bible speaks of doing it in sackcloth and ashes. And that's a true sign of mourning and repentance and confession. And, and as God works, you know, from a place of brokenness and hurt and lowliness, and then which leads to the repentance and restoration. And she brings ashes. Now I don't I don't show her clip talking about it, but when she got there, she had to fly to get there. So here's God at work. She has her luggage with all her sackcloth and her clothes and stuff, which is already unique. And TSA goes through all this stuff. So they have her pulled aside and they go through her bags and they come across this big, like grocery sack size, like the plastic grocery bags you get at Walmart and whatever, um, full of ashes. So right there, you know, she, she goes and she talks about how this, you know, was a big minister, ministering moment for her to the TSA to explain, you know, what she was doing. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, doing things and, you know, repenting in sackcloth and ashes. And she shares it with the TSA guy. And the TSA guy is, okay, well, here's your giant bag of powdery stuff, but I don't really know what it is just because you say it's ashes. I believe you. And lets her go through, check, no, lets her get on the plane. Let's her fly, get herself up to D.C., and she meets up with Philip and his crew. TSA ain't supposed to let you do that. They'd have taken that stuff under normal circumstances. That's God. That don't happen on its own normally. Just a note. So she catches up to Philip and his crew, uh, unplanned as well. She just kind of knew from his Instagram and his social media stuff where they're going to be, what they're going to do, and she goes to join them. Um, so she explains what she's got. She tells her story and they get together. So they, they are going to a separate new location and they're getting their sackcloth on. See, I said it right that time. Um, and their sackcloth on and they get into the ashes. You, you, she's putting it all over her face and stuff. She's got a, you know, a head covering on for her hair, you know, trying to look as biblical as she can. And, and Philip, he gets his bag on his sackcloth, and then he just gets fistfuls of the ash, and he's just smearing it and pouring it on his head and going out there. And as he does these things to get prepared, obviously, this is not the normal everyday thing you see on the street corner, especially in D.C., um, especially during Inauguration Day. And the events that follow are what becomes of that. You can only begin to imagine, I think. Christina had put on her sackcloth. She got all the ashes. This is where it got a little bit crazy. And so I put on my sackcloth, I got out my ashes, and um, you know, I just started just putting them, rubbing them on my hands, rubbing them on my face. I sat down on the sidewalk. Um, Brother Philip, he put on his sackcloth, and he, um, he started putting the, the ashes you know, on his head, and it was blowing. It was, it was, you know, it was blowing on me, and it just, you know, just, it, I could just, such a powerful moment continuing to be more and more powerful is like building up he put on the sackcloth he started 
um, putting the ashes on, and I'm sitting there just kind of meditating with God, you know, praying both internally and, you know, externally. We, I took the ashes out of my hand, or out of the bag, put it in my hand, and I started just pouring it all over my head, rubbing it on my head. I'm preparing. We still had 10 minutes to go before we were even gonna start. But as I prepared to walk out into the street so that we could get a thumbnail for the live feed, we were immediately surrounded by Capitol Police, secret agents, I don't even know, police officers, uh, military, I just, I got lost in the shuffle, but immediately we had several police officers tell me, don't move. Stay right there. I'm just gonna put that up. Stay right there, buddy. Okay. Stay right there. Stay right there. Get up. This is Stay right there. So as he finishes getting himself prepared in the sackcloth, you see it blowing off his head, smoke and dust blowing through his, uh, you know, the wind, and he starts to enter the street corner. Immediately as he steps into the intersection, see the swarm of the police that come around him and come around him and get with him. Um, so obviously, they don't know what's going on with this guy, what's on his head, what's that smoke and dust and material blowing around. Why is this guy wearing a giant sackcloth bag for his, his clothes? What is he doing? So obviously this day and age, what's the first thing you think? Terrorist. That's what you got from here. So is there an intersection in there? You know, the police are like, don't move a muscle, don't go, don't move. You know, and he starts to be able to, he starts to, to share his message and tell why he's here. And he starts to share the message and they let him keep going. But obviously, you can see you can see in the video that it starts getting very tense, and the the girl is on the corner and she's on uh, sitting there like Indian style, you know, legs crossed and she's just praying. And there's a, a guy that they met the same day, another guy that just kind of met them, a guy named uh, Jorge Pina. He has a ministry out of D.C. Uh, you'll see it in the video clip. And this guy was brought straight from God too, because. During the midst of this, they start to s disperse the people, like because they think he's still a bomber. They think something crazy's going on, and they have hit Philip in the middle of the street, this girl on the corner, and standing next to her is this guy, random stranger, you know, random stranger met that day, from, uh, you know, within D.C. But the police allow him to stay there, and during this time, obviously, if it were me. I'd start to get scared, police pointing guns, uh, soldiers coming around, pointing guns, people yelling at you, don't move, stop, do all these things. I would, you know, I'd be scared. And, uh, because you don't know what's about to happen, and I don't know if this is the day that you decide that you want to die or not. Um, that's up to God. Side note. We'll come back to that. So this guy, you'll see him, and I'll show you the, the clip here, where... He's there just to encourage. He's a source of encouragement and strength to kind of keep the prophet at this point, because that's what Philip is serving as, as the prophet, you know, as the biblical prophets would. And uh, he's there to, to give them, to help impart and give strength and encourage them. The Bible says that we were moved from the mouth of Jesus, the Lord, and believed in the heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Today is the day of salvation. Preach, bro, preach. Preach. Forgive us, Father. Don't quit, bro. Rod your spirit, Father. Oh, my goodness. Go for it, bro. Go for it. The spirit got us in you, bro. Just do it. Now is the time, brother. My friends, we have to humble ourselves. Yes. We call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus. So as they allow him space, he's, Philip continues to preach and share the word and you hear the police they're starting to they're dispersing the crowd they're making them go further everybody get back get back back and in this process you get to see here where things become more and more heated you can you can hear it in the voices that are that are there you can sense it in people's body language and what's going on and uh so we get a, a clip of that here as well you film it if you want but back in the up. bible it talks about sackcloth right. and ashes sir Back up. Back up. Give us some room. Back up. Back up. Back up. Keep backing up. Back up. Back up. And they begin to clear the area. And I believe 
they cleared it a block and then eventually cleared it back another block. So two blocks of clearance. And we had this huge ordeal go down where I think everybody thought I was there with a bomb. Uh, suicide vest uh, underneath my sackcloth. I don't know. So there was a lot of fear uh, on everybody's side. I truly have faith in God and I trust in Him. And I believe in His plan for my life. And I know God had sent me to that intersection to preach Jesus. I got scared. I saw life in front of me. And I began to pray and I said, God, I know you sent me here, but you didn't tell me if I was going to live or die. Go pray, bro. Jesus Christ is coming soon. That's right. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. That's right. We must humble ourselves and pray. That's right. In the Bible, it talks about humbling yourself before God in sackcloth and ashes. That's all this is. It's an outward demonstration of our humility before God. We come in peace. All right, we are real Christians. We're not about violence or rioting. We're not about rebelling against government. We're about praying for our nation so we can see true change. Because Jesus Christ loves us, but we have rebelled and we have gone against his ways. Right. We have turned against the ways of God. Choose this day who you will serve, my friends. I, I bless the up, police here. I bless the back military. Up. I was in the Marine Corps. I'm not an extremist. I am a Christian who loves Jesus. Sir, that is all. Back up. If there is one message back I can up. share with you today, is that back we up. should not love our life. This hey, life Annie, is we're going to have to get them to take their items we if we're going to push them back. We are here for a moment. Do not go past here. One day we are gone. The from tank. the flesh we can't, from the who's dust calling? we came to the dust we returned. I have no idea whose items Gentlemen, you are. Gentlemen, Jesus loves you. Police, military, Jesus loves you. That is the goal here. It is to promote nothing else but Jesus Christ, King of glory. Here. That we must repent for the sins of the nation. Today is the day. When America turns its back on Christianity, Christians, it will never be the same for you in America again. That is just the truth. So we came here to preach about a return to the Lord. God puts us in places in divine timing and positioning so that his gospel might be preached. That's all this is, my friends. We are here to promote Jesus Christ and to prophesy upon the nation, America, we have separated ourselves. We have separated ourselves. It doesn't matter if you're on Trump's side or on Biden's side. We are human beings. We are flesh and bone. We all bleed the same red. And Jesus Christ loves you. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Make sure they the take their items with them. If they have them, make sure we push them back. Come on, start moving back. Grab all your stuff. I'm going to walk with you again, all right? Do not trip. Put my finger on it. Jesus Christ is king. Keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Leave your stuff. Leave your stuff. Get back. Go. Back. 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 Go. So while this begins to escalate, um, there, you might have heard the one voice starting to kind of yell, you know, a, a woman's voice, very aggressive, very strong, very demanding. Uh, and it turns out to be Krista. I call her Krista the cop. And Krista, um, you know, starts, you know, directing people and she gets pulled, pulled off to the side and gets a hold of one of the cameramen for for torture christ and she went when she goes to talk to him but what you're going to see and much of what you already are seeing in the world is the view of everything towards christians christianity believers in general is becoming more and more hostile and this is a really good example of a person um who doesn't you know has no grid for what's taking place you know and, and I, Fully understand she's doing her job. I fully understand that you know she's looking out for the protection and safety of, of everybody involved. But at the same time, she, her heart comes through in this. So I want to talk to you real quick. Are you with this guy over here? What's the deal? Uh, I was Why do you dump stuff on himself? What is it? Ashes of what? 
I don't, yeah, I get that, but I'm trying to see, you, you realize well, this is a suspicious incident, right? Okay. It's a little weird when someone does answers on themselves. I'm, I'm, ma'am, what's you get your, that? What's your name? I'm Krista. Krista. Nice to meet you. Nice what's to your meet name? you too. My name is Alex. Let okay. me, you asked me a question, let me explain. Sure, go ahead and explain. Okay. You realize you asked, this is a problem right now, right? Again, are you going to let me explain? I'm going to let you explain. Okay, let me say something. Go right for it. Number one, we have freedom of speech in this country you still. You sure do. You do. That's number one. Uh, you do. Number two, I'm an American citizen. That's fabulous. I, I am too. Okay. Number three. But you understand why we're concerned? You're not going to let me explain. I, I'm not. Because right now, so you're not going to speak at all. Are you going to let me explain? Go for it. Okay, then let me explain. Krista? Go. Okay. If you've never read in the Bible, which I can, I can tell you you haven't. Okay. Okay. There was there's an act of repentance that was done. Okay, so you're okay. with this guy right there's here, an, right? Okay, you're not going to explain. I'm not going to listen to you. Okay. I mean, look, if you're going to ask me questions, then let me say. No, because I'm asking you why you're here. I'm, and, and I'm trying and why to explain. You're and, and I'm trying to explain. You know, it's I'm sorry, I didn't see. You don't no, understand you, that? No. You again, understand why it's causing Krista. a bit of a, an issue right I now? I understand. I understand. Okay. But again, when you ask me a question, I want to explain. I want to explain what he's doing And then you cut me off. And then you cut me off. You cut me off. So why is he doing this? Again. There's an act in the Bible that prophets would do okay. to um, make a display of repentance, which is a good thing. That means turning away from things that are bad okay. and turning to God and following God's laws. And prophets would do that to uh, is the there nations. A he, like, let me ask you this. Is there a reason he's doing this right here? Absolutely. What is the reason? Well, it's, it's the symbolism that America okay. needs to turn from sin turn to God okay. while there's still time that God may hear so the you, cries of this nation that this that God may restore the nation to law and order we are about law and order. Okay. That's, okay? That's, we're, that's we're, great. we're not about my issue is I don't want him to be a danger to himself or someone else sure does that make sense and I, I understand you may not know what's happening I understand that but but what I'm telling you is that there is nothing that he's doing. I don't think uh, there that, is. That is a threat to to, to I'm this just nation making sure or that you. he's not a danger to himself. He's not a danger to himself. Or the people in the area. He, it looks crazy. I, I get that. But Christians look crazy to people. We say some crazy things that sounds crazy to people. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. Those that are perishing don't understand the message of the cross. Okay. Okay? But the cross, it, it, but it's the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. Okay. And so the message of the cross is foolishness to those per perishing, but it's the power of God unto salvation. Okay. Okay. And what, what we're displaying is that this nation is at a critical point, and I get what you're doing. This is no, by no means any threat to anybody, but this is an urgent no, message now it's my to turn get to right talk. with God. But you do understand the response when someone dumps powder on themselves. It's not powder. We don't know what it is. We're not with you. Well, you asked me, and I'm telling you what it is. So my job is to make sure it's not a harm to the folks in this area. I understand that. Or him. Sure, no problem. That's it. Completely understand. So that's all I wanted to check on. Make sure it wasn't something dangerous that you knew since I know that you were traveling within this location. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's ashes. Okay, So great. Yeah. So what you might not begin to notice is you know, when they're showing the clips, get everybody, get back, get back. Well, who is there witnessing this? There are countless number of police now. Military, you might see the, in different different angles, you in clips, you get to see how many guys in camouflage and uh, large weapons. And there's one of them even has like big, like Humvee tank looking thing uh, that I saw in there. But also because it's inauguration day, there are photographers and news crews from basically all over the country and all over the world, um, which is something you'd be able to kind of tell. So not only is he spreading the gospel to the hearers, God is using this to provide a means to spread and project this to the world. Folks, we still want you out of the street, at least in case we need to get a vehicle through here. So on the sidewalk or on that grass. 
Eh, otra mujer en la zona de la izquierda que entiendo que en estos momentos se está manteniendo una conversación con este señor que se ha puesto a cantar el himno de los Estados Unidos. Ojalá, de verdad, estaba todo transcurriendo con, con total normalidad. Ojalá no, no ocurra. So while all this is being captured, film, video, uh, photos, all this stuff, um, you know, it, things finally kind of take a turn. Um, Because there has to be a resolution somewhere and as we can do you know god allows time and space philip gets the whole gospel message out the whole uh, idea that america as a, as a whole a group needs to turn from its worshiping of false gods and idols and things that are false and lead to death to to turn to god and repent uh, that's the essence of the message right you yeah, know you heard that um so then there, there is um a lady Uh, named Kathleen, who is in charge of the bomb squad. So she's kind of not only bomb squad lead, but uh, uh, what's the word for those people? Negotiator. That's what I'm looking for. She's like the negotiator at the same time. But she is of authority to kind of decide what happens. I think the most beautiful part of this entire testimony was the interaction I had with Kathleen. Because this woman... Um, She could have done things so differently, but instead she took me through a series of procedures where uh, I had my hands up. Uh, she had me slowly raised from my ankles all the way up, raised the sackcloth, showed nothing was underneath, held my hands up, got down on the ground, had my face on the asphalt, and uh, she checked me. Uh, she frisked my, my entire uh, person. She turned me over onto my back, did the same thing, and then she, she gave the, the clear sound uh, signal. Eventually I was able to remove my sackcloth, but I, I, I was most definitely afraid in those moments uh, of doing something wrong. So uh, I'm not afraid what man can do to me. I'm not afraid of death, but I do, uh, I do know that there is an aspect of humanity that comes out of us in those moments. And I was telling these brothers uh, here just not uh, some minutes ago, I'm not afraid to die because of persecution, because of someone coming against me because of my faith. But I don't want to die to a misunderstanding. Even in that moment, I considered, I said, maybe God's plan for me is I get taken out and, and it gets, it, you know, the whole world sees it so that, you know, a multitude can come to the Lord. We consider all these, you know, all these options, possibilities. But this beautiful interaction I had with Kathleen where she was just amazing. She was very patient with me. I was very patient with her. I was able to minister to her, give her a, a good testimony of the love of Jesus and what we're doing and the reason for what we're doing. She asked me about, what is the purpose of your ministry? What exactly are you trying to do here? We explained we go to very dangerous areas all over the world. We help people uh, focused on the love and the gentleness and the goodness. She didn't need a hard message in that time. So we had a connection and uh, She told me, she said, thank you for what you're doing. We need more of that in this time. And, and we, were, we were connected in that moment, I truly believe. I'm never going to forget that lady. In my mind, she saved my life today because it very easily could have ended differently. I think every single one of us in our group were convinced we were going to be arrested and questioned, interrogated, uh, end up on a watch list. I mean, a million possibilities run through your mind in these moments. And praise God, after all of this, because of respect, and if I could pass along one message to young preachers, young men of God who want to do what we do and serve the Lord and be obedient, in these moments, you don't defy authority, you don't rebel, just be respectful, show the love of God. And it was the love that we showed each other that got us out of the situation, because it was her decision to arrest us or not. And I asked her, I said, have I committed a crime? She said, no, you haven't. And she's like, and you're right. We, you know, you've been very patient. You've been very cooperative. You've been very respectful. We have nothing on you. You've done nothing uh, illegal. So we have to let you go. Um, they could have made a different determination very easily though, based on suspicion and a lot of other aspects. So, uh, incredible, incredible day. Wow. So I'm looking at these clips where he's in that middle of the intersection and he's turning 
and he's broadcasting. He's calling the city, calling people, calling America out for their sin. That was the job of the prophets of old. And, you know, God used them to speak when he was going to issue judgment or when he called them to, hey, I see this and I need you to address it and turn to me and make these things right. Or comes the judgment. And some of that is what he was saying. Um, but as I look at him and I think about this, the, the act of preaching like that, that's what it immediately takes my, my mind and back. Like I can envision back in the days when Jesus was on the street corners. And, uh, you know, after Jesus, Jesus ascended to heaven and the, and the church began and the apostles began to, to go out and spread their message, um, you know, what that was like for them to go into these different cities where people didn't want the message at first. People were, people, obviously Christianity spread like wildfire. People wanted the message. They heard the message, but there was a large faction in all these other places all the time that did not want the message. Um, and such a tale that gives you a real, a real eye-opening spot is uh, the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians 11. Um, Paul kind of lays it down because he's kind of having some words for uh, the folks in Corinth. And, you know, he's, he's taking a little liberty in his speech to be able to boast about his life and times so that they get, so it helps kind of paint a picture for them to get the point of, you know, of uh, all things. And uh, so what, he's, what he begins to say, and, you know, I, I, before, before I read it, think about this. If you are exposed to real and true danger for your faith, if you, by saying, yes, I worship Jesus, the God of the Bible, and there is no other, are you willing to stand for that, even in the, in the face of death? You know, I mean, people around the world are currently this day and this time. That's a reality. Um, you, know, you know, most easily understood is the extreme Muslim nations, where they take their uh, Islamic beliefs so to heart that to just to be a believer is worthy of death. In the face of that, are you willing and are you prepared to stand for your faith? Um, cause you know, Jesus promises us trials, tribulations, persecutions. Uh, like after all, he says, you know, take heart because if they hate you, don't worry about it because they hated me before you. So count it on as count that as a good thing because you're walking like me. You're looking like me because they hated me first. Back to Paul. And, you know, we recognize Paul, you know, a writer of, you know, two thirds of the New Testament, um, you know, a Superman apostle you know, as far as going out and preaching the gospel and all these things. But here's what he had to say. This gives you a little insight also to what, you know, to the 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 real life of the apostle, preacher, prophet, teacher that Paul was, was really like. Um, and it's also through that we can gain and, get, and glean a lot of understanding to back to that idea that you will be persecuted for my name. As Jesus said. So in the Second Corinthians 11, uh, begin at verse 23. Are, uh, are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I'm talking like a madman with, that, with far more imprisonments, with countless, isn't that bad? When you have, you wear glasses, but to read, you have to look under or past your glasses. So I'm going to, here you go. Second Corinthians 11, 23. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Three times I've been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, robbers, danger from my own people. Danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardships through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. 
And apart from other things, that there is, there is daily pressure on me from my anxiety for all the churches. So, you know, one of those times when Paul, when Paul said he was got stoned, here's an example. That's from Acts 14, start at verse 19. So at Lystra, they stoned Paul, and they drug him out of the city, thinking that he was dead. And then the apostles, they gathered around him, and then he rose up, and they went back into the city. And then the next day, they got back up, and they began preaching again. So hopefully, you can you can use all this, you know, what you see in the video to kind of help paint the picture for you what life is out there as the end times step-by-step -step approaches. Um, you know, no matter where you think you are in the timeline, you know, because of there's different ideas of what means what and when, when, when means what, but there, no matter where you are and where you believe you are in the timeline, every day an event that takes place, you are getting closer to the return of Jesus. That life for the believer is not going to get easier, not in the physical sense. Um, we can have fullness of joy within our spirit in our hardships and our persecutions, our trials and our troubles. But we have to be made right in our spirit uh, with God through this, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us, our daily engagement with God the Father. You know, that, that, um, being in his presence daily so that God can pour his spirit on you, pour his love on you. You can pour your love into him, back towards him. The, the fullness of the draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And, and communing with God. So, you know, the truth of all scriptures and all the different things that we can know has to find a place where it meets here. So, like, the there's the all the knowledge and wisdom of scripture and teaching, but if there's no experiencing the God that you have all of this about, you're going to be out of balance and it's not going to, it's not going to serve you anything. Far more important, which I am continually learning more and more all the time in, in my pursuit of the intimate time and intimate relationships the moments spent with God is if you don't know him versus know about him, you're doing yourself and all of the people around you a complete and giant disservice because the God of the Bible wants to be known and he wants to know you personally, intimately, relationally. And that is the key to the whole thing. I don't have to know all these theological things to know him and to know that he loves me. And if I know that he loves me, and I know that he died on a cross to pay the penalty for my sin, and I know that he was crucified for that, and his blood shed paid the penalty, the atonement, paid the price for my sin, and that he was buried in a grave, and he rose three days later, three days later, and then later ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, and then sent the Holy Spirit to live and to dwell inside the heart of every believer. That's what I need to know. That's what I need to live in. That's what I need to walk out. And so does each one of you. Believer or not, at least at this point. But if you are a believer, we gotta walk in the knowledge. I said knowledge, but the knowing that you know him. And I'm, I'm still learning so much about intimate time spent with the Father. Some people, it's, it's amazing how God works all these things out in different people, but, you know, because God is good and his grace is sufficient. And he knows how to work things out for each one of us, depending on where we are in our walks, the challenges that we've had in life, the things we've had to overcome, the way that he administers his spirit, his presence and healing and all the things that we've been through to bring us to where we are today. It's amazing. Totally, totally amazing. And um, I, I am reaching out and I'm asking all of you that if uh, you already don't, if you if, you're a watcher and you do not currently know that you have a saving faith and belief in Jesus, please understand that he died for you. 
He shed his blood on that cross to pay the penalty of your sin. And the Bible says if you would believe that Jesus is Lord, and he did this, that he, he died for your sin, his blood paid the penalty, he was buried and resurrected and now sits in heaven at the hand of the Father. If you believe and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. It doesn't get much simpler than that, but you have got to completely believe it. You've got to know it. God will always build. That's the whole goal is that we go through this life of being built in that understanding and that relationship and what it looks like. And you're never going to get there till you leave this world in the 100%. That's what that sanctify you hear the uh, you know again for those who don't know big church word sanctification that just basically means from the point he a to point end of time when you leave this world that God is going to continue to do things in your life to to show you Himself to teach you and to purify use things to purify you which meaning you got to um, as God reveals things to you that you need to repent of. Key to, all, key to everything. Repent and turn away from your sinful ways because you can't do the things that you always did that God said were wrong and follow Him. That's a real key to a lot of things. So as He reveals things to you and you repent from them, you are being made more like Him. The dirty is being broken and washed off and the clean you is going forward. Right? We've talked in these videos before about crucifying the old man, crucifying the flesh, and putting on the new man. Right? That's this process of being made new, being made more like Jesus, so that you know we're as we walk in into newness of life, you know, we do these things that honor God. So our relationship and status with him is is maintained and kept right. So if if you don't know that for yourself, I kind of sidetracked myself, but if if you're a person that doesn't know that hundred um, percent, you can ask me. Ask someone else that you know is a believer. Um Grab a Bible and, and start to read like through Book of John. That's a good place to start in, in the, as far as New Testament stuff goes. But find out. Ask God. And he'll and he will. God, are you real? Can you help me with these things? And, and you know, show me yourself. He will. It's not always how you think, and it's not always when you ask immediately. You know, God does things in his time. As a believer, we're promised that God will take care of us that he will give us everything we need for life, supply all our needs, needs, keyword needs. But, um, you know, he doesn't promise. There's, there's people who promise that life will be better and easy. That's a lie. There's people who promise that because now you're a Christian, you're going to have all the money. God just wants to bless you no matter what. God does want to bless you. But it does not always mean that your checkbook grows exponentially. It does not mean that you won't ever have a problem, because you will. And sometimes because you are who you are, you have other problems. And that's how it's going to be. But Jesus, he tells us, whoever wants to be my disciple must lay his life down to follow me. And if you ever, he lays my life, one who lays their life down to lose it will be able to actually find and gain their life. Paradox of things. So as we to kind of just wrap things up, that God uses everything that takes place for his goodness and glory. God is in control of all things at all times, no matter what. Even though we as little tiny humans might not understand what he's doing, he's still in control. And if we put our faith and hope and trust in him and walk hand in hand with him, then life will be good. Is he will give us fullness of joy and love for him and love for one another. And that is an ever-growing thing, which is awesome. Because no matter where you think or feel that you are, there's always more. If you, you, know, if you think that your faith is weak, God, strengthen my faith. God will grow your faith. God, give me more love for you. God will begin to give you more love. And... He wants to be able to spend personal, intimate time with you. And that's his greatest desire, is to be with you, to love you, and then to have you spend time with him and to love him back. That's the reason that you were created. So my friends, 
Um, I know we put a lot out here, but just know this, that God loves you. God has his, his best for you. And he wants to, to know you and spend intimate, close, personal time with you. Seek him in those, in those ways for all that you got. And things will begin to, to, to grow, to become, you, know, you will find more love for each other. You'll find more peace. You find ways to work out in the midst of issues and problems that you, you know, in new ways that you didn't know before. And you'll see that like, wow, that's better. I don't know. Uh, I, for one, am continuing to seek that in my own life. And, and there's a point, there's a thing that I'm looking at that, I'm asking God for about this intimate time and presence with him. You know, as it, as it's growing for me, you go from this, I'll describe it like this and see if this helps that you, you get these little spoonfuls, you know, the whole, you, where you know that, you know, the Holy spirit is moved in and you're connected, but it's like spoonfuls. So now my spoonfuls are like the, like the big tablespoon spoonfuls and maybe a cup or two here and there. But I'm waiting for God to be able to dump the whole bucket, like ice bucket challenge bucket, and dump his presence on me that washes over me and drenches me and submerges me in a way that is undeniable, that is beyond anything that I could ever hope, dream, or imagine. And I know that he will, but like most all things, I understand and know that these things are a process. But And I just share that with you as maybe encouragement that it's not, it's not easy. And it's not, some people it's more instantaneous than others. But like for me, in my life, in my walk, it is processed. Piece at a time. And uh, if, if, you know, if anything, if you, you know, if your life is kind of like mine, that it's okay. God's working it out because he never leaves you nor forsakes you. And it's his highest pleasure is to reveal himself to his children. That he gives good gifts to his children. And a good gift is the gift of himself. That's the best gift. So God bless you. I love y'all. Take care. And until next time, seek the Father with all your heart. Pull, lay down yourself. And just spend time with him. And love on him. And he'll love you back. So God bless y'all. Till next time. <laughs>